Hi, welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. U.S. media coverage of the crisis in Ukraine can sound, at times, hysterical. So, Martha, give it to us straight. Is the United States closer to conflict with Russia tonight or not? Vladimir Putin, the bully Vladimir Putin, may already have gotten what he wants, Crimea. So it's very possible he won't push any further. This is the way that man negotiates. He is a bully. He is hammer-handed. This is how he operates. Dealing with the villain Putin, that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. So far, it's been all talk, no action. Politicians in the USA and Western Europe all condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but doing little else. Now, at the root of some of this panic is the idea, popular among Republicans and media figures alike, that U.S. weakness is what has emboldened Vladimir Putin. And the president just Friday afternoon said there would be costs to this kind of intervention. So what are the costs? Why is it that Russia seems to disregard these warnings from the administration? David Gregory reiterated that point numerous times on his Meet the Press show. This is a conversation about Obama's leadership, pure and simple. This is a major test for whether the rest of the world, particularly bad actors, uh, take him seriously when he says to not do something. And he got agreement from his NBC colleague, Chuck Todd. And this done. is not the first time with Putin. Putin acts, Obama warns. Putin acts, Obama warns. Puma, Putin, I mean, this is a, a pattern that he can't afford to stay in here and just continue to warn. You heard John Kerry, more warnings. It's not surprising to see U.S. politicians act as if the most important aspect of a story is how U.S. politicians are posturing in a crisis. But it's unfortunate that so many in the media seem to think this crisis is really all about us. That's not to say, of course, that we've seen careful examinations of U.S. actions or even recent U.S. history. One major theme of coverage of the crisis has been, as this Washington Post editorial wondered, whether Russian President Putin has lost touch with reality. The New York Times was also on the case, noting that during his March 3rd press conference, Putin had delivered a version of the crisis that was fundamentally at odds with the view held by most officials in the United States, Europe, and Ukraine. Now, there's no doubt that some of what Putin says is dubious, but it's worth examining some of the evidence here. As the Times notes, Putin discussed the double standards that justify American or NATO military operations in the name of protecting human rights or democracy, but disregard Russian concerns. Putin went on to mention the Iraq War, Afghanistan, and Libya. Of course, the list here is much longer. Ronald Reagan's 1983 invasion of Grenada was justified by a supposed need to protect a small number of Americans. The Panama invasion was accompanied by a similarly flimsy rationale. But there wasn't then, or now, any suggestion that American presidents had lost touch with reality. But we do hear claims like this pass by mostly without criticism. You just don't invade another country on phony pretext uh, in order to assert your interests. It is not appropriate to invade a country and at the end of a barrel of a gun dictate what you are trying to achieve. That Washington Post editorial wondered if Putin might actually believe his own propaganda. He might. The real question is whether U.S. politicians and elite media believe theirs. And finally, on March 2nd, almost 400 activists were arrested in front of the White House, protesting the Keystone XL pipeline. It was a dramatic action in the nation's capital about a controversial political issue. But that didn't make it newsworthy, apparently. A search of the Nexus News database turned up only some passing mentions on American television. The hometown Washington Post, as well as the New York Times, ran short, web-only stories. One of the more thorough reports about the protest came from the independent media. Democracy Now! host Amy Goodman explained that the protest could be the largest youth sit-in on the environment in a generation. And then she interviewed a climate activist. Now, if we're to believe anti-government activists in Venezuela, the fact that the television there did not offer live coverage of their protests is proof that the government is stifling the free press. So what's the excuse when the same thing happens here? I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.